Hi, again. Hello. Are you all sick of me yet? Have you all had enough? Or is everybody ready for one, one last class of the day? There we go. Let's get rid of that. Hi. Hello, hello. Who's watching? I would let me turn my comments on. Karen, Bromwen, Kelly. All right. Look at me with my fancy clean workspace. That never happens. You know, I kind of clean anyway. Just clean in this bit. You are on time, Tina. Welcome. Okay, so today I thought, uh, for the last class of the day, I thought I would have a go at doing a scrapbook layout using the 49 and Market Vintage Ancestry papers. So these are a great little collection. So I've got the Sky collection, the Coral collection and the Lilac mini collection. Sorry about the glare there, but you kind of get the idea and what I love about these collections is they all come with the ephemera well they they come not with that you can also get as well that I think that's what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. um, you can get these these guys here these lovely little ephemera stacks um, so they've got these gorgeous little die cut pieces in it and they're fantastic for building your pages so um they're super inexpensive as well you get you know 34 pieces in there and they're i don't know 12 dollars or something like that but i just want to create a page today just using one of these packs um so i really like them they're quite they're easy to use so this particular pack is the sky mini collection and it shows you the extra things that you get in it. Hang on a minute. Let me turn that down. There we go. Sorry. Uh, so you can see those things that you get in there. They're all the die cuts. And the papers are all patterns ready to go. This is the mini coral collection. And this is the one with the beautiful butterflies um, and little bits and pieces. So that's the coral collection. And then the lilac collection also has uh, some lovely butterflies and bits and pieces as well. And the papers are also quite nice and printed. So I am going to be using one of these three today. Um, I love the blue. The blue's gorgeous. Um that's really a no-brainer for me that's always going to be my first option the corals really pretty and I love these little elements here these are great and the purple the lilac everyone knows how much I don't love this color to work with so I'm gonna challenge myself and I'm gonna go for the purple to the point where I have just put the other paper pads out of reach. So, Louise, can you please remove one of these from the inventory? The Lilac Mini Collection from 49 and Market. So, these papers are really nice. So, let's have a look through and see what we've got here. I've committed to it, guys. <sighs> anyway, all right. So gorgeous paper. So this is the front cover and then there is a, a, a patterned paper on the back that I can use. This is the second page in the pack and the reverse is really lovely. Oh, that's nice. And then that's got, oh, tranquil moments. Then that's got a really lovely washed piece on the back there. That is amazing. That's really nice. 
I know, I'm sorry. Look at me go, stepping out of my comfort zone, doing <laughs> something. Thanks for noticing, Fiona Harvey. I see you. So just to show you that uh, I also can create things that I don't necessarily at first glance love to work with. So this is the die cut pieces here. And you can see that they're all die cut. Do you want me to give you a quick flick through of what the other colours look like so that you can see them? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Lou, can you just pass me those other two packs I've just put out of reach, please? Because, you know. I'll just open the other two packs just to give you a quick flip through of the papers, okay? So this is the... Coral. And so the Coral Mini Collection, 12 by 12 papers. Because you can't touch and feel, uh, this is probably the closest way of showing you what's in this paper pack. So that's got a gorgeous print on the back as well. So you get like a bonus paper. So that's on the back of the cover sheet. That's really nice. Look at that gorgeous image there. And it almost looks like it's been watercolored. So that paper is called Fleur. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Another very similar one, but with a different print. It's got a lovely newspaper print in the background there. Um, why is there two of that one? Oh, that pack's got a bonus. Uh, that is lovely. Look at that. And this one's got a really fine newspaper print and almost like a canvas look through it as well. That's inc that is incredible. Look at that. And that's got that one on the back. Modern Romance. So it's got a lovely um, print up there and almost like a wallpaper damask style there. And then these are the cutouts. So they just, they're all die cut, so they'll just pop right out. Lots of little pieces there. So that's the coral pack. I just want to count how many sheets are in that one too. That one seems to have a bonus sheet. And then this one is the Sky. So the mini collection in Sky, which is a really pale blue. I almost want to say it's like speckled egg. You know the new Tim Holtz colour? Um, it's that sort of beautiful baby blue. So the front sheet has got a really nice print on it. The second one has got that, so that's great. Look how easy it is. Just stick your photo there, slide a couple of bits in there, pop a title on, tick, done, happy days. Oh, but that's nice too. I love those leaves, that's pretty. There's eight. Is that right? What does it say on the front of the packet? Six. Oh, it does have a bonus one in there. It's got a bonus two. All right, so then, sorry, Lu Louise and I are just chatting amongst ourselves here. <laughs> um, so the coral was really lovely. This is the sky. This piece is called Collector. And it's got a really lovely pale mint on the back. Ambrosial. Oh, it's unusual. It's unusual. It's different. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. And then, oh, wow. Maybe I should have, no, I've committed to the purple. Oh, that's so pretty. So these are the die cut sheets. And they've got these super cute little beads here as well. And these little beads are little die cuts. So you don't have to cut them out. They're all die cut ready to go. And these are 15% off as well. Okay, so that was the Sky Collection. So what am I going to do with this? I am going to start with creating a, a base for my page first. So looking at all of my papers, 
Oh, sorry. Kick the... No, I'm not going to change my mind, Fiona. Thank you. I'm not changing my mind. Um, okay. So I want to have another look at my papers and I want to keep things super simple. I don't want to add too much to them. I want to let the paper do the work for me. I love this page because this page has got a lot of mixed media in it ready to go. And I can see that if I put something in the middle here, I can then build on that. So I'm going to use this one as my base. And I think I like this as well. So this has given me the opportunity to perhaps pop two photos there. Oh, but I like that. Okay, hang on. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do two scrapbook layouts. One of them is going to be on this page. The other one is going to be on this one. I'm going to start with this page. First thing I want to do, um, I don't have any photographs prepared, but what I do have are a, a photo mats, some paper for photo mats, so that I've got a pretend photo. All of your scrapbook pages need to start from a photo, okay? If you're not starting from a photo, then really what is the point of doing it? Because that is what scrapbooking is all about. It is about photos. It's about memory keeping. So my pretend photo here is about three and a half by five and a quarter. Um, the idea being it, I, I usually take a six by four photo and I would trim off some of the rubbish on the side. So that is going to be my photo that goes there. And I'm only going to use one photo for this layout rather than using a couple. Uh, I'm going to keep my, my focus on that. Um, yeah, I'm a bit of a stickler when it comes to uh, scrapbooking. I, even if I don't have a photo, there will always be a photo mat handy, something that indicates where the photo is going to go. Um, I scrapbook, my, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I scrapbook my favourite photos rather than than every moment in my life because I uh, just don't have the time. So that is where my photo is gonna go. And it'll probably be a horizontal photo. So let's commit to a horizontal going right there. So looking at these cutouts, let's start with the flower because I love this flower. So I'm gently gonna push this one out. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in storytelling and and telling the story of what the, the, the emotion that a photograph evokes. I think that's the, the word. Um, it's got to be about what, what it means to me. I still put on every single scrapbook layout who, what, when and where because when I'm dead and buried, before someone throws all of my layouts in a mini skip, or wherever they end up being passed down from generation to generation, I always hand write who's in the photograph, where the photo was taken, and when the photo was taken. Um, there is absolutely nothing better than picking up a photo or picking up a letter with handwriting on it. Even if you hate your handwriting, I bet your great grandmother never hated her handwriting. What do you cherish now? Do you cherish picking up a photo, looking at it and flipping it over and looking at that photo on the, and seeing Nana's handwriting on the back of it with the date and who's in it? Um, that means so much more to me now that my grandmother is no longer here. Both of my grandmothers aren't here. And I love looking at their handwriting. I think it's amazing. So you want your great, great, great grandchildren to have that same emotion when they look at your handwriting down the track. Okay, so think about that when you say, think about that sort of thing when you say to yourself, oh, but I hate my handwriting. You know what? It's not all about you. It's the reason why we do this in the first place is about the memory keeping and, and what we're doing it for is to tell a story, okay? 
I'll get off my high horse now. <laughs> All right. So I have just punched out these flowers and they're going to sit there. Um, I, I, I like this bit here, this little book piece. So what do you say, Leslie? I do the writing on the computer. Oh, okay. Fair enough. But is there nothing better than looking at a photo that, you know, with, a, with your grandmother's handwriting on the back? Does that not rock your world a little bit? I love, I, I miss my grandmother dearly. And, you know, for, to receive a, a Christmas card in the mail with her, her handwriting on it would just be, just be awesome. I'd give anything to, to see that again. All right, so I'm going to pop this little window out because that's a really cool feature. Um, now, let's have a look. Can I use it on this page or will I use it on the other page that I'm going to do? Hey, Leonie. Welcome, love. I might use it on this page, I think. I really like that. So then when my photo goes on, okay, so I'm going to keep that one for there. Um, this one here, I can cut this paper up. I'm just looking at the rest of my cutouts and trying to work out which two pages. I'm going to spread them between the two pages. And this will be a great, great way to start. Um, sorry, I'm just reading Karen's comment here. It's not the same as people not wanting to be in the photo. Just, just get in the damn photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I lost my mum 40 years ago and we have about six photos. Um, Karen, I, I feel that, absolutely. I Not long before my grandmother passed away, um, she lived in Port Lincoln and I said to, my, said to Jessica, um, right, we're going to go and have a coffee with Nana. And Jess says to me, but Nana lives in Lincoln. And I said, that's right, it's only an eight-hour drive. And we jumped in the car and we drove to Lincoln and we had a cup of tea with Nana and took her out for lunch and and spent a weekend and then drove eight hours home. Um, you do the things because the opportunities aren't going to be there again. So I think that that's really important to do that. And I photographed almost every single... I enjoyed everything before I picked up the camera. I enjoyed it through my eyes first and through my heart first before I enjoyed it through the camera. So those, those things are important, especially as a scrapbooker. All right, so I wanna use the banners. So for those of you who have just tuned in, I'm doing um, two scrapbook layouts using the 49 and Market mini paper collection which have got two pa two pieces of these die cuts in them and talking about scrapbooking at the same time as you have heard and how important it is to tell the stories and um, remind yourself of what you started doing scrapbooking for in the first place which is to tell the stories to to record the things that uh, you can't till later on when you are no longer here nearly punched all of these out and they just pull out super easy right oh one more off that sheet gosh they seem to be never ending right pop that off to the side got a big clock on this one Um, you know what? Tina's just like, you have to beg for your photo to be taken. Take your own photos. Tell your own story, Tina. Why do you have to wait for somebody else to take your photo? If you've got a mobile phone, you've got a camera in your hand. And even better, you don't have to pay to have them, you know, a whole roll of film printed. You can delete the ones that you don't like. I'll teach you how to do selfies at the retreat in a couple of weeks time what do you reckon it's about time we all did another selfie class again 
remind me of that when um, when the retreat comes around or I'll um, forget because it's well well documented about my memory all right so I'm nearly there from punching all of these little elements out but the reason I'm punching them all out now is because I want to allocate them between the two scrapbook layouts and see which is um, which is going to work yeah Renee I wish you were coming to retreat as well I would love to have more people come this year, but it's not the case. And I do keep the retreat at a very low number. I try not to crowd the room too much so that everybody has a great amount of space. Um, okay, so these are my bits. Got my two layouts. Um, I love these flowers. I love the clock. The clock can probably go on this page because there's already a lot going on on this side. What have I got here? Little dragonfly in the middle. They've done a fantastic job with this paper. Um, dragonfly can go on that page. So uh, don't forget, for those of you who have just started watching, um, watch the first couple of minutes back again, because I will... <laughs> I will... <laughs> Be able, yeah, I did a flick through of what some of the other papers look like in this collection. So this is the Lilac Vintage Artistry and there is also the Coral and the Sky Blue one available as well. Um, and Louise is just going to have a bit of a look up for me. And how much are they, Louise, these great little paper collections? And they're 15% off as well. All right. And next time you, sorry, next time you jump online, throw, your, throw yourself a, a um, Natalie May scrapbooking stubby holder in your cart, guys. You'll, you won't regret it. Okay, so what are they? I'm just working. The discount. Oh, she's just working out the discount price for you. Okay, so these are all my little bits here. Right, stop fluffing around. Let's just commit to it. Double-sided tape. A bit of cardboard. Eighteen dollars twenty-eight. That is a bargain because I think that I could probably get three to four layouts out of this collection pack, um, which is pretty great actually. So if you jumped online, look under 49 and market, you will find them at nataliemay.com.au. All right, 15% off until the end of the day tomorrow. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've got a piece of cardboard. Um, instead of using foam tape, I like to use a piece of cardboard on my layouts to put my photo on so that, um, so that they have, they've got a solid base and they're not all sinky in the middle. And I'm just peeling off the double sided tape and I'm going to commit to it. So when I create my layouts, I work from the photo down. I always work from the photo down because that is what it is all about it's all about the photo so what have we got here this can probably go here yep you know what let's just commit to it smack bang in the middle into the big piece of that cut out there um, I'm going to take a little bit of one of these other papers because I want a little bit more purple Let's look at this piece here. Um, and I'm going to, I'm not even going to use a paper trimmer. So if this freaks you out, look away. But it's okay. Just commit to it. Done. Done. So what I can do is I can now keep, I can start building up some layers in underneath this. It needs a little bit more purple. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> never in a million years. Uh, and now what I'd like to do is I'm going to go in with glue. I'm going to use my puzzle glue instead of double-sided tape. 
and I'm going to pop a little on the back here slide that in under there so I'm not going to go edge to edge with my photo because I still haven't added my embellishments and I want to be able to tuck things in underneath and that is really important because I haven't decided exactly what this layout is going to look out yet look like yet um, but I'm working from the photo and those elements down and the good thing about using glue is that I've still got a little bit of wriggle room okay that's gonna go there and then I'm going to add another piece of cardboard and foam tape that or mount that bit and then that I am happy with. I'm going to then stick my embellishments on. So how's everybody's Saturday gone? Have you all been, uh, have you been checking out some of the exhibitors with the Craft Alive Great Australian Craft Show? There's quite a few other exhibitors and uh, from paper craft through to fabric craft and sewing machines, um, all of those sorts of things. <laughs> all right, so I'm just trying to get my blade, peel my tape off. Um, Tina, I, I know you say, Tina's just commented and said she admires people who can just cut. Um, I guess that comes with years of practice, of course, and years of just creating. I've now learnt to, <laughs> I've now learnt to create, to keep me happy and to create Yeah, things to keep me happy, I guess, rather than to impress everybody else. So I don't have a high level of perfection. I have a, I, I do a lot, like I said, just to, to keep me happy. So um, that's the difference there. I've got some of these little frames from the cutouts. I do like these. They're very nice. I might pop my flowers on first because the flowers are the pieces that I really wanted to focus on. Okay, so this flower here, this flower could either go on that side or that side. To me, I feel like it needs to go here for the way that it is sitting. So I'm going to use some foam tape for this. Cut off a piece. And just pop those big pieces of tape behind these big elements. There is no need to stick them down edge to edge. I'm just going to whack them on. I'm going to commit to it. The more I fluff around, the longer it's going to take me to do this. And you guys do not want to listen to me bang on all afternoon. You've done that already. And I think that's enough punishment for everybody. Um, I do like this flower. I feel that he needs to come up a little higher for balance, so I'm going to do that. And I can always go back and add more tape later on, but right now, this is fine. This is enough to pop it into position. Um, so I've got an area here that I need to fill this and I need to fill that. But I'm going to come back. I'm going to start working on my second layout at the same time so that I can balance out all of these elements and I'm not going to double up on anything. Uh, so that one's going to go there. I need to cut myself a photo first. I need a photo map. five and a half by oh look a little bit a little bit under four for that one bit of cardboard a 
Do you go get, get a cup of tea, Luke? Yeah, cup... No, I've got a Pepsi here. Pepsi? Sticking with my Pepsi. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, I've just got my photo ready to go. Now, this is kind of nice. So, I need to have a little think about what I'm going to do with that. So, I could put, I can leave it like that. I could put something behind it. What could I put behind it? Not that. Nah, I don't love that behind it. Well, that's nice behind it. Okay, so this bit of paper here, called something I can't pronounce, I'm going to put this flower behind this window. I think that that screams for mounting. After all, it is a window. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to foam tape it up there as well for dimension. So I've got some 6mm double-sided tape, sorry, 6mm foam tape that I'm just going to run down that edge. I could have also turned this into a shaker window. Ooh, that would have worked great if I was organised. But I'm not, so I'm not going to. And that is, I reckon, exactly six mil. Gee, that's tight. Is the turtle still in the bath? It is. Hmm. We, um, Trevor and I have, Trevor, Jessica and I have a turtle. And uh, our turtle is called Barry. We actually think Barry's a female, but... I'm sure he's fine with the name. Um, she. she. She's fine with the name. Um, and Barry is having a tank clean out at the moment. So Trevor has popped Barry in the bath, which was fine until Louise went into the bathroom <laughs> a minute ago and it scared her into halfway into next week that because she didn't realise that Barry was in the bathroom. And she looked over to her side and saw what could have been... A snake. A snake <laughs> in the bathroom. But it wasn't. It was just the turtle sitting in the bath having a little holiday. Very funny. One of those had to be there moments, but that's okay. Oh, so I'm just cutting some of these bits a, a little thinner because the strips at the bottom are a little thinner. So we think, we, we're not too sure how old our turtle is. Trevor seems to think he's about 20, 25, 26. I reckon that's about right. Trevor had him when we got together and that was 20, 20, a long time ago. A really long time ago. Okay, so this is bugging me. Just bear with me a second, guys, because I seem to have lost the knack on peeling double-sided tape off today. There we go. So the 6mm foam tape is going to give it just the right amount of lift on this page, and I'm going to trim it off after I put the tape on. And I really... It's a bit of overkill here with the tape, but I didn't want the middle of the... I didn't want the middle of the window to sink down, which would happen So what did you all think of my little reindeer from before? I see a few of you liked the idea because um, a few of you ordered the little reindeer. <laughs> Oh, we sold out of the reindeer, did we? Yeah. Okay, so we've sold out of the reindeer. That's funny. I didn't realise that. 
reindeers have left the building. The reindeer have left the building. Okay. Pop that on there, there. So now it is lifted up and it's giving it that little bit of a shadow underneath. Um, that little bit of dimension is making all the difference. Loved the reindeer, missed out on one size. Look, if you do decide that you would like one, um, just flick me a message and I can order one in for you. I do have to do another order in the next 24 hours. So if there is one in particular that you are after, please let me know. I am more than happy to get hold of that and then I can add it in with your next order or we can arrange to pop it in the post by the end of next week. Just takes a message. Don't feel like you've missed out just because it's out of stock. You can always ask. I'm either going to say yes or no. Hey, Kirsten. I'm just going to trim that size down a bit. Hey, Jessica May. I see you watching there. All right, so... This window looks really nice now. See, I've got that nice flower behind it. Um, foam taping it up has given it that little bit of shape with a very small amount of effort. And you know what? I'm just gonna whack it down. I'm not gonna think about it too much. Oh, Fiona, just because it's your birthday, love, doesn't mean you get to be late. All right, and I'm gonna stick it there. I'm just gonna stick it there. Now I'm gonna take my photo. Oh, hello darling. And I'm gonna stick it there, but I do need another piece of cardboard underneath because now that I've taken that high, I need to take it a little higher again, okay? It needs to sit just a fraction higher, okay? And I'm just going to be lazy now and do the glue way, which is very effective. So just a hot tip for anybody using glue on a scrapbook page, never, ever, ever use a glue stick. Glue sticks are for kids, guys. And they are not a permanent, a permanent thing for your scrapbook layouts, okay? Oh, that's pretty. Let's stick that there. It's like your own private little birthday party, isn't it, Fiona? my husband doing out there? Cleaning the tank. Cleaning the tank. Well, I'll be damned. He's committed. Yeah, you start something, you got to commit to it, yeah? Bit like me in this purple layout. Okay, so that little cutout's going straight through the middle. And they're the key pieces I want for this one. Okay, so I'm on the right track here. The rest now is going to be about adding in some more elements just to finish off the decorative pieces. So I'm going to move all of my cutouts to the top up here. Hey, Jackie. And I'm gonna work between the two layouts at the same time. Keeping it simple. It doesn't have to be overly complicated, of course. Um, that I can pop there maybe. It can't. No, I suppose it could pop on the outside of the window. I don't love it. I don't love it on this side of the window because that flower's going the wrong way. Okay, it's facing out of the page. It's a sort of flower that really needs to face in the page. So I might just fluff around with that one just a little. And it might just go up here or down. Oh, that could work. Okay, stop talking. 
Okay, got a dragonfly. These butterflies are facing that way, so they cannot be on that side of the layout. They've got to be on the left-hand side of the layout. So I'll put one on that page, and I might pop one up in here. These banners are really nice. I don't love that bit, so I'm gonna take that out. The banner can go there. Under there. And there and then I need something to go here so let's have a look at some of these embellishments I like the clock it's got a big hole in the middle though that's a bit weird so I need to cover the hole up so how do I cover the hole I cover the hole with a butterfly because that makes sense today that can go up there for a pop of colour. Let's commit to that. Bit of glue. Bam. <sighs> Got this guy. Up there. That needs to go on a piece of foam tape. Now that I've put glue on it, I've decided it needs foam tape. Here's a bit I prepared earlier. there I don't know that's okay oh look that goes there let's pop that there hello Robin welcome welcome oh perfect right building this layout nicely here my butterfly, I'm going to stick that in. I'm going to commit to it. The more I mess around with it, the longer the layout takes, the more I've, I've lost interest and forget about why I'm doing it in the first place. Um, so I'm going to slide that in under there. I do like the little banner. I don't know about him yet. So this little banner, I'm going to... Got some glue on my finger. Now, when I'm, I'm not an over gluer or an over taper when it comes to my layouts because I know that they're going to go into a plastic sleeve and then at some stage in the distant future they'll go into an album. So once they go into a sleeve, if you have used a good quality tape and adhesive, that it's going to last. So buying something from uh, your adhesive from a cheap shop is not going to give you a, a, a product that is archival and that is going to last. So it's really important to purchase your double-sided tape 
from some from a shop that should know what you know what to stock um, so what I mean by that is don't buy a double-sided tape from a cheap shop don't buy your double-sided tape from Bunnings okay you wouldn't go to um, to Bunnings to buy a handbag okay it's not what they specialize in that makes sense So you want to focus on, you want to make sure that you are using a, a product that is designed designed for the purpose. So I like this frame. Cut, cut. Um, so yeah, I think that it's important. So archival quality products that are going to, um, that are going to last is really important. Um, on a, just a point with archival as well, photo printing, when you get your photos printed, it is really important to think about where you're getting your photos printed. Are they going to last the distance? If you are scrapbooking for memory keeping, for generations you're doing something to tell a story on your ancestry or for whatever reason you need to find out if your photo printing is archival and will last 99 years uh, currently I am aware that in Australia sorry here in Adelaide they're only the only place that does photo printing that is going to be archival is Harvey Norman. Harvey Norman uh, at present are one of the very few places that still do what's called wet chemical printing, meaning that, I don't like that, that's annoying me, um, meaning that they still do the whole chemical dip for printing. Um, Officeworks, Kmart, uh, quite a few of those other companies do what's called dry printing. And you'll notice what dry printing feels, um, they feel different. So he, they feel, uh, they feel dry. But they are not archival quality. They are not going to last. They have got no longevity to them at all. If you ask a staff member at Officeworks if it is archival, uh, chances are that the 12 year old serving you probably won't be able to, to answer that question anyway. <laughs> but um, that is uh, pretty much the, the honest truth about it. I know you can go to professional photo labs and get your photos printed. That is something that uh, I used to do but I don't have one near me uh, that is still in business, so I only use Harvey Norman for my photo printing. I have a Canon Selfie here at home that does instant dry printing. I quite often use that for instant prints, but I always replace them with photos that I get printed from Harvey Norman, okay? Because I want my photos to last. It's a little tip for the day. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just creating a frame around my photo because that is what it is all about. It's about the photo. So working around, taking these little elements that I have here. I don't know about the lock, that's a bit heavy. Um, taking all of these elements that I've punched out from the sheet and popping them around my page. Um, I, Pick it up, move it around, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, I need to use something this colour because I've got a bright pink in there. So I want to be able to pop that. There will do. Um, now, I just noticed the question came up. Is that cardboard between your photos? Yes, it is. Um, cardboard between my layers. Is that archival? No, because it is not touching my photograph, but it is the tape that I'm using is archival. Um, 
If it's going to be touching my photo, then it needs to be archival. Okay, so the cardboard that I'm using or all the mixed media bits and pieces that you put on a page, none of that really matters unless it is touching your photograph. Okay, does that make sense? Because it's whatever is on your photo that damages it, that makes it age. A bit like putting the sun on your own skin. You know, the sun on your skin ages it. Okay. I'm going to walk away from that layout before... Oh, no, hang on. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to pop this down here. Gosh. So this is one of the punch outs from the sheet. So I want to pop that down there and pop a piece of foam tape behind it. Big bit of foam tape as the case may be. And then my title will go over that. Um, my title is going to be one of these pieces here. Oh, this says, choose happiness. Gets a bit lost on there, so I might frame that on a piece of this purple. Um, I think what I love about these papers the most in this collection pack is the die cuts really set the tone for the whole layout. So it means that the, 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 the die cuts, if you lay those out first, you don't have to do a whole lot of work. Just tearing that. That's better. Oh, that's not. Drip, just dripped glue all up in my knife. All right, so I'm gonna pop that aside for a jiffy and I'll come back to that in a second. And let's have a look at this layout and see what else I can do to that. Um, I don't actually think it needs much more. I do need to put something here. This is where this little flower ending here needs to be covered up. I'm not loving that. Um, I could use one of these circles. No, not that. Can anybody else hear my dog barking? Because he's a little wet bag. Right, I'm going to slide that in there because I like that word. Sunshine. Can you hear me concentrating? <laughs> All right, there we go. So, where are we at? Nearly done. I just want to finish it off with the title. Uh, and then I will stop. Look at that. I didn't even use those pieces or these frames or the dragonfly. And I does need another butterfly. What a, no. 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 And I'm going to put 
all the good things. That's going to be my title. And I'm going to do what I did over here. I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on the back. Tear that. All right, done. Foam tape. <laughs> All righty. One hour, two scrapbook layouts, a lot of talking about nothing in particular, but it works. So I can still slide my photo in here when I decide to grab a photo. My butterfly, his wings still come up, so he's got a bit of dimension. The bigger one might have been better there actually. Oh, that's better. Maybe the little one, ah, there mm. we go. We'll just do that. Okay. So, scrapbook layout using the 49 Market Lilac Vintage Artistry Collection, little mini collection, um, currently 15% off. It comes in coral and sky. So, um, single piece of paper for the background and all of these elements are from the die cut bits that are included in the pack. So, super simple, just needs a photo straight in the middle. Then the second page that I did, simple again, we've just gone with that beautiful paper in the background that does a lot, speaks a lot. Anyway, doesn't need much more done to it. This lovely window is included in the die cut pack and that I just mounted behind it another piece of patterned paper that has this lovely little flower print through it. Um, slide in a couple of little bits in the side. The only thing that I would do differently to this, um, and I'll do it off camera, is add some dimensional magic. And when I use that, the idea behind doing that is I use the fine tip. I'll do it now. I use the fine tip and just chat amongst yourselves. Hang on. Oh, don't be blocked on me. There we go. And I can just pop some glossy on these and then that gives them some dimension and they will dry lovely and shiny. Okay, so um, some people like uh, dimension, uh, glossy accents. My favourite is the Dimensional Magic and I use this because it is the one that I've always used. Um, and it's a little bit more fluid and it works really quite nicely. So if I do that, I need to add that in a few other little areas as well. So I'll just do it on the leaves and it just gives them that little bit of uh, a bit of shine when it dries. It will take um, 20 minutes, half an hour or so to dry and pops up really nicely. Um, it's an excellent adhesive as well, this stuff. It works great. Um, and I'm shaking. Pop a little around the butterfly and now just ha has that little bit of a shine and then I'll need to do that to the other one as well. Um, anyone who has purchased any of my kits online you'll notice that um, I always use this product. It's one of the very few products that is um, has been around for as long as me. <laughs> um, but it gives it a really lovely little shine and it's super fine and super fluid. 
I'm not squeezing the bottle at all. It's just coming all the way through. So just in finishing, nice and simple layout. Yes, considering I don't like purple, um, I surprised myself. I do like this layout and I do like the lilac of the paper. And it's always good to step out of your comfort zone every now and again and try something that you don't necessarily like. Um, I'm as shocked as you that I made this purple layout work. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm really, really happy with it. So, um, the paper collections. So there's this one and the, uh, this one, the coral and the sky still in stock. And I do believe that there's also the Christmas one available too. So the Christmas one has exactly the same thing, has some great die cuts with it. But you can also purchase the collection pack that goes with it as well. Um, so you can make your papers go further and add lots of little bits and pieces to them as well. So, um, yeah, so that's the 49 and market. 49 and market. Oh, that's the Christmas pack. Oh, I'll put, I'll have a flick through. Do you want to have a, do you want me to do a quick flick through of the Christmas pack? Give me a thumbs up. Give me something. Or are you over it already? Yep. All right. Easy done. Okay. So we'll just do a quick, quick flip through after I finish popping this on. Thanks, Susie. But you can see that that dimensional magic... And when it dries, it looks really, really pretty. Thanks, Lou. Okay, so this is the Vintage Artistry Noel 12 by 12 collection pack. Let me just put the lid on this glue before that goes really bad. And because I'm going to put this one back in the packet, I'm just going to protect it by putting that there. Okay, so the Vintage Ancestry 12 by 12 collection pack. We've got the cover page. Oh, wow. That's quite mustard. But you know what? It goes with this. That's nice. These are really thick papers as well. So that's the back of that, that stripe. This one has got the the lilies as well as the um, Father Christmassy man. That green is awesome. Oh, look at that, that's pretty as well. And they've got these lovely stitched shapes here. A nice neutral tone. Then this one has got what looks like stenciling. So there's your mixed media done for you. A punchy punchy red and then we get into the die cuts so the die cuts that we have got we've got this great frame cut out here we've got a Santa um, some lovely green elements you've got some holly some flowers um, titles berries little birdie and then this one has got lots of frames for you to use Plus some lovely quotes, some poinsettias, um, some lace ribbon down the bottom here and another little bunch of flowers. So they're excellent value for money and easy, easy layouts. Um, not a whole lot of brain power to go into using those. So, um, so there you go, guys. So thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Um, and sitting through that, I appreciate that. The two layouts, here we go. I'll pop a photo on those um, shortly. So we've got 15% off paper collections, 15% off of Christmas, and 15% off of Scrap Effects products. The Scrap Effects special is today only. Um, the if for those of you who have already ordered this weekend, thank you very much. But if you haven't ordered, You've got the advantage you can pay first, pay for shipping on your first order. Then everything else after that 
we collate all your orders together. So when you get to the checkout, just select no judgment and we will um, put all your orders together and post early this week. So we'll spend Monday and Tuesday packaging um, and go from there. There will be another daily deal tomorrow. So you have until tonight when I go to bed to take advantage of the Scrap Effects special. And then uh, tomorrow there's going to be a brand new special. So thanks so very much, guys, for sticking around. And I hope you're all enjoying your Saturday. Um, jump online to nataliemay.com.au. I'll take a photograph of these two layouts in a moment and then place them online with a link to the comments, uh, to the items that I've used. And we'll go from there. So thanks again, guys. Um, have a fantastic day. Wash your hands, kiss your kids, um, and I will chat to you soon.